video, we're going to focus on naming molecular compounds. Like this slide before, we went over the different types of naming substances. We went over the elements, atomic and molecular, now I'm focusing on molecular compounds. Molecular compounds contains non-metals only. When you look at the periodic table and you know where the non-metals are, and you see two different non-metals bound together, you know it is a molecular compound. And the distinguishing features of molecular compounds is that they don't transfer electrons, there, but they share electrons in this chemical bond between them. And you must follow some rules when you name molecular compounds. If you look at one of your pages in your workbook regarding naming binary molecules and molecular compounds, you will see this page. This is the rules for naming molecular compounds. Name the first element using the prefix to indicate the number of atoms in the formula. Name the second element using the prefix and changing the ending to IDE, ID. If the element starts with an O or an A, drops the A in the prefix and do not use the prefix mono for the first element. And this is the table of the prefixes that you need to memorize. So let's look at an example. SO3. Sulfur is the first element. Since it's the first element and it's one, you drop the word mono. So it's just sulfur. And then O is oxide, and there's three, so it's tri, so it's sulfur trioxide. Another example is S2O5. S is sulfur. There's two of them, so you use the prefix di. And oxide. And there's five, so it's five is penta. So when you write, it's not pentaoxide because you're violating rule number three, so it's pentoxide. My next example is PI2. P stands for phosphorus. Please make sure you know how to spell phosphorus correctly. Phosphorus is P-H-O-S-P-H-O-R-U-S. There's not an extra U in there, so please make a note of that. I2 by itself is a molecular element. This is not by itself, so this is not iodine at all. Please be very clear about that. In this case, it is part of a molecular compound. Therefore, the iodine changes to iodide, and there's two of them, so it's diiodide. Also, what you want, I want you to notice is that it's D-I-I-O. D-I-D-E. You must have the double I in this case. The D-I is the prefix and the iodide is the name of the element. This does not follow rule 3 at all because rule 3 only goes for elements That's what, that starts with an O or an A. In another example, let's take a look at dinitrogen octoxide. Nitrogen is the first element, so it's N. Di means 2, so it's N2 oct oxide. It's not octa oxide because O is oxide. Eight is octa. So the element starts with an O. Therefore, you have to drop the A in the prefix. So it's oct oxide. So it's N2O8. Another example is carbon tetrachloride. Carbon is the first element. Therefore, you write C. Tetra means four. So it, and chloride is Cl. So it's CCl. Four. And the ex last example that we have is xenon difluoride. Xe is xenon. Difluoride is an F2, so it's XeF2. Please make sure you know how to spell fluoride. In this case, it's F L U O R I D E. And I'll be checking that on your exams and quizzes. Also, please really note that I have all these examples right here. The second element has the element changed to ide. The first element is just written as is. And that's how you name molecular compounds.